Hi there, my name is Kai Vierda and I'm a product manager for CA Release Automation. Welcome to this five part series of training videos for the Rapid Development Kit or RDK. In this fourth part, we'll cover the RESTful action type. Let's start with a name. And a description. We'll skip the action category and go straight to the input. I'll be using a public REST API that gets the weather information for a particular city. So I'll add a single input parameter named city, uh, enter description. And go straight to the REST call itself. So from here you can do four methods, get, post, put, or delete. We use a simple uh, get and the URI we'll be using is this one. And to query the weather information for a particular city, I uh, drag in the input parameter to map it as an argument to my URI. Optionally, and we don't need it for this example, we can specify request headers. And depending on the method you uh, pick, uh, other options are available. This REST API does not require any authentication. So I click the no authentication option. And basically these uh, checkboxes control which authentication options uh, will be available for the action in release automation. Let's execute this uh, REST call. Enter a city, let's say New York. And hit execute. Just like before, when we looked at the uh, CLI and uh, script action, we can see the execution results. We have the response body, we have the response headers, and the response code available to us. Now let's scroll up a little bit and have a look at the output parameters. So by default, the output parameters that come out of the box are the response body. And you can see I uh, selected this. It actually is a regular expression to select everything from the response body, which is also highlighted response headers uh, again everything from the response header source and the response code a regular expression for everything from the response code which is the uh, the last one in line what we can do here is add additional output parameters so for example we can add the temperature Pick a JSON path since we're looking at JSON information from the response body and add the appropriate JSON path expression. And as you can see, once we've added the JSON path, we are now highlighting the temperature in the response body. We can add another one for description. Apparently it's misty in New York. Another option you'll find listed under the output parameters is this one. It says create an input parameter for the output file location. What this does, it actually will create an input parameter that will uh, enable the user to provide a file path and it will write all the output from the, in this case from the response body to that file. So if we click this option, we, when we scroll up, we'll see that there is a new input parameter called output file location. So this is just an additional output, which is optional, where if the user provides a file path, we will write the uh, output to. So we'll leave that option in. And now let's execute the rest call. New York. Let's uh, write the output to see TMP rest out txt and hit execute let's quickly switch to the tmp folder and open the rest output and as you can see the results are written to this text file 
let's look at some additional error handling options. So what happens if I provide a city name that does not exist? Let's try that. I doubt there's a city called Fubar, but who knows. Look at the response, although it still gives me a response code 200, which means the, the rest call was fine. The response body says message not found. Right, so now we can use the error conditions to filter for not found and make the action fail. So to do this we go to results and we add a condition and we say the parameter response body contains this. The action will then fail and we can say the city could not be found. In fact, we can also uh, use the city parameter and display that city. in the error message itself. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out part 5 of this series where we cover how to export and deploy an action pack.